I'm going to show you how I made this wheat inlay pattern, as well as how to avoid some of the pitfalls, and if they happen, how you can fix them. I decided to take advantage of the naturally occurring spalting in this alder, as it'll make the wheat pattern look a little bit more natural. Just a thin piece of walnut veneer is enough to separate the individual kernels of wheat in the pattern. I start off by gluing together alternating pieces of the alder with the walnut veneer. You want to make sure these surfaces are all either plain smooth or sanded at the very least. Starting with the alder and ending with the walnut enables me to continue the pattern as I glue these pieces together as you'll see in the next step. For the second glue up, I cut the piece into three roughly equal sections at a 45 degree angle. Those pieces are then laminated together for a thicker block. Now you could start off with more layers and avoid this step. I followed this approach to be a little bit more efficient with the use of my materials. I use a block to give greater clamping power uniformly across the board. I chose a 5 16 of an inch length for the pieces. I use a stop block on my bandsaw sled to ensure I get good 45 degree angle pieces of uniform length. I glued together the first half of the wheat pattern, followed by a layer of center veneer, allowing that to set while I glued together the second half of the wheat pattern. The second half is simply flipped over and set on top of the first half, creating the wheat pattern. Unfortunately, the way this is clamped together doesn't give me any end-to-end -end clamping pressure. And that creates some problems, as we'll see. I want to give you an example of what not to do and why accuracy and precision and um, paying attention to having things planed out and smooth and flat, not just relying on your saw cuts, really makes a difference when you're doing inlay. Now you may think that your saw cut is smooth, but it's not plain smooth. It's always a good idea to plane off your surfaces before you glue them together. And you can see by looking really closely at it that there, I have a couple of gaps along uh, the center line here. Those gaps will show up in the work and if I'm using it as this piece is intended in the center of a pizza peel, you're going to get food particles stuck down into those cracks. Not a good thing. Uh, as far as the grain goes on this, I'm kind of happy with the varied design. That's why I had um, different pieces of wood that I put together and flipping them over gives a little bit more contrast. It does look more like a varied wheat design rather than just um, the barbershop pattern, which is half of it with the other side flipped to the other side. Um, you can see how rough this surface is. This is just cut by using the bandsaw. It doesn't have the same sulky smooth surface as a plain down surface has. So you can tell also that this edge is a little bit jagged. If I try and glue something together, this is the kind of result I'm going to have. My, I'm going to create those gaps. I can actually put my fingernail in there. Um, so I need to plane down the edges first. This piece isn't completely lost. As far as these pieces that, again, I can get my nail into, uh, those are not acceptable either. I'm going to have to cut those apart, put a new piece of veneer in there before I can actually glue it all together. The inlay in this peel has been successfully repaired by ripping it down the center, planing both sides, inserting a new center veneer, and then planing the outside edges flat before putting a new veneer on the outside. During the repair, 
some of the points didn't quite line up together, but it's actually okay in this case because it's a wheat pattern. It doesn't need to be precise. Making my own inlay allows me to slice it thick enough to go all the way through my peels. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, subscribe.